first year we did Walker's Armicon, you called it a reunion this this weekend. And and so talk about like literally the, the family relationship the Walker or the, the Walking Dead family. Just so Lou, I mean I just I, I hadn't seen Lou since season uh, three as well. And and it is it's it is a unique experience um, working on this show, and I think uh, I think because it's this story that is linear and keeps moving forward, and we collect people, and they change the environment of the world. We sort of learn through people, that, you know, what's happened out there. That they're so vital to your experience and how your character changes. So you do, and you carry them with you. It's like in life, you meet people and you lose people. But they're always with you. And, and I think because also this is six years we've been doing this, this is the first time I've ever lived with a character for this uh, amount of time. And, and also this is unique. I mean, um, we're looking at you guys, and it's a great big room of people who just have the same, share the same passion that we do for this job. It's just the fact that we get to kind of wear the cowboy boots and ride the horses and stuff. But it's the same stuff. And things. And this was the, <laughs> the great thing that we're doing each season. We do sort of uh, the crew does and makes T-shirts, you know, for each department. And this year, uh, I don't know if I'm spoiling anything for the crew, for the, but I think they all know this. If they don't, they're going to know in about 30 seconds. Uh, we're making sort of a mili military jet, military jackets, and each department's going to put a badge and all the rest of it. And. Uh, However many years you've been in the show, you get stripes. And it's one of the coolest things, you know, that there are, I think, 17 or 18 people with six stripes on there, which is in key departments, which is a huge, huge mark of why this show is so successful, is that people don't want to leave. They want to tell the story till the end, you know. And, and these last, it's, you know, harking back to what David was saying about the, 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 sh the show airing now, it gives a shot in the arm to the, to the crew to push us to the end, to the finishing line. Because they know that you guys are experiencing it, feeding. We feed off your energy. So you kind of give us a shot in the arm uh, to, to get us over the finish line. So thank you. How are you guys liking the show right now? So, yeah, so anyway, so I'm on the camp. And I, I've done everything with the eye patch, but I've never driven. So... <laughs> The shot is, it's in one shot, and I fire the gun, jump in the, <laughs> jump in the truck and drive. And of course, I've never driven with an eye patch. So I'm driving and I'm thinking, oh, I can't see a thing. So I have to sort of lift this up <laughs> as I'm driving around the field, thinking, I hope, we, hope this doesn't mess up the shot. <laughs> so that was if surprise. you pull a lot of your, a lot of Rick's character from the comic, or have you used other sources? Yeah, I, 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 I did. Read the comic until they cut my hand off. <laughs> then I stopped reading. Uh, no, I, I, I did. Of course, I read it. And when I found out that it was based on this gra on this comic book, on this graphic novel, I sort of voraciously went through um, the first. Um, uh, what's it called? It a compendium. compendium. I was going to say symposium. <laughs> that's the musical. That's the, that's next year. The musical. <laughs> It's still early, I need coffee. Um, but yeah, I, I did, I, I kind of wanted, it, it, it's strange because I drew from a lot of things. I got a note from Frank Darabon and he said uh, I wanted him to watch High Noon um, for um, Who's the name? Who's the main? Uh, Gary Cooper. He said he wanted that Cooper-esque kind of leading man, sort of, uh, it's something quite subtle and inscrutable, and there were qualities to him that that he wanted. That I, so I sort of focused on that, and then I just just picked from loads of other things as well, you know, and um, and sort of drew from myself. I mean, you can you can only reach so far. I'm not one of those incredible actors that can shapeshift. I'm one of these people, I don't go out to win, I go into out, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, so I sort of try to use the words and my emotions to sort of make it my own reality. Um, and it was kind of, 
extraordinary because you kind of, I had that first episode on my own to live with this guy. And it was a really helpful thing because I, I, I just, I sat with it and, and sort of worked out a lot of ideas just listening to music isolated from everybody. Everybody thought I was probably insane and, and the most miserable, weird British actor they've ever come across. Because I didn't really talk to many people and just sort of talk to the horse, really. And, and, until it got eaten. Uh, when, the, when the horse talks to you, you've got to be so questioning yeah, yeah. yourself. But, um, but yeah, I, so that, and it's funny, I did revisit the comic book for the episode with Carl, you know, when I got beaten up to, in, in uh, season four, which was almost a facsimile of the comic book. So I went back and reread, and I may do it again if I'm still alive at the end of this season. <laughs> dun, dun. All right, we're done. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Andy, David. We just want to thank you guys for being here. So, we took the three of them out of your head. Uh, the, the jacket that Andy is wearing this weekend, it's got his name on the inside. It was made for him. He's going to sign it. We're going to have the rest of the cast sign it this weekend. We'll put it up on eBay. It's going to go to Andy's charity. Um, so, be on the lookout for that. Um, but right now, too, we're going to release the platinum and the golds if everybody else will just give them one minute to get out of here. But everybody give it up for Andrew Lee.